Before I start my paper, I have again to express my gratitude. This time to Professor Renato Lopez. He is the manager of our whole uh, academic telenovela here. <laughs> and yesterday when he came to me and put all these wires around me, uh, I said to him, listen, if we did that in a studio of the television company, they always send a nice girl in advance, mm -hmm. which makes you beautiful. And what did he do this morning? He brought a nice Brazilian girl with him who fixed all these wires around me. <laughs> Thank you very much for this Brazilian humanism. <laughs> Let me repeat what uh, Stemo just has said. Bon dia a todos. Bon dia. Now, the title of my paper, you can see it at the screen. By the way, I in put some um, cartoons into uh, the presentation, and I'm grateful to the cartoonist, who is a famous Romanian uh, painter, um, Dan Perjovsky. And uh, I mean, the, the, the essence of what I have to say, you can see it in this cartoon. Um, I will speak about what meta history is about, and it is my approach, it is my intention to present you a comprehensive concept of meta history. In the academic discourse, meta-history is done all the time in different places, but normally the people pick up only parts of it. So you either can speak about the rules of research, historical culture, historiography as a form of narration and how to create meaning by writing and things like that. So my main purpose is to put all these things together to give you a general overview of all the issues in meta-history and I try to put them into a systematic order. Just two remarks to the first point, what is meta-history? The first is meta-history is a reflection about historical thinking. It is a thinking about thinking which causes some problems and is unusual for many professional historians. To make clear what this problem is, to reflect a process of thinking, a thinking about thinking, what will be the starting point for such a reflection? My starting point is the anthropological fundaments, the basis of historical thinking, which is the case in all cultures and all times in everybody. It is a basic form of generating sense and meaning about the experience of temporal change. This is a basis. All human beings have to do that. And um, in the following argumentation, I will try to explicate this process of generating sense about the experience of temporal change. I will explicate its components, which makes it rather complex, because there are several components in historical sense generation. I will do that in a general way, so that is true for historical thinking or better historical consciousness, which plays an enormous role in human life, but there's always a special perspective or a special respect in my argumentation because we should know what this distinctive nature, the specifics, of historical studies of Geschichtswissenschaft, Scientia no Historia, what it really is. 
because it is an unclear question. Many people in the natural sciences, for instance, think what you are doing has nothing to do with science. Real science, that's us, and well, yours is just something different. And this is the second intention of my paper, to make clear what is the specifics of doing this sense generation about the experience of temporal change when we do it as professional historians in our specific way of doing history. So the question is, what is historical sense? My first answer is, it is an activity of the human mind. It is something we do with our possibilities of interpreting and understanding ourselves and the world. So I tried to indicate the dynamics in this circle with the little arrows. It took me a long time in PowerPoint to come to these arrows and therefore I'm very proud that I can show it to you. And you see these different uh, lines which indicate there are different elements of the principle, the dynamic procedural process of the principles of historical sense. Well, in order to find out what these single elements and their interrelationship of historical sense generation is about, let's shortly ask the question, what is sense in general? And this is uh, what I have uh, in a very short and very uh, rough and abstract way I would like to make clear. And I would uh, add a remark. In the literature about culture, you find always the statements that it is impossible to define what culture is. So you can read in books there are 70 or 80 different definitions of culture in cultural anthropology. And so culture is everything and nothing. Forget it. There is a clear definition what culture is. Culture is human sense generation, full stop. We have to make sense of the world and ourselves in order to live our lives. And that is a very specific activity in human life which can be distinguished from other dimensions like economy. Economy is not sense generation, but economy is work. It's getting nature acquired, a social relationship is something different and so on. And you can see without the outcome of culture, all the other activities of human life would be impossible. Even economy without sense is impossible. At least it is a catastrophe. We know what that means uh, today. And to give you an impression, but only an impression, about the complexity of this culture defining sense generation in general, I uh, uh, give you a scheme wh where you can see the different dimensions and factors of this culture-defining sense generation. It is a dynamic, an activity of the human mind which includes perception, interpretation, orientation, and motivation. Sense is done in these four different activities, which are, of course, all interrelated. And in orientation, it is rather important. You have to orientate not only uh, in the outer world, where the other people are, and uh, you have to earn your life and so, but even you have to orientate yourself about yourself. That is, the internal orientation the most important one is working and uh, building, constructing, or bringing about one's own identity in the relation to oneself and to the others. This is what I understand by sense, and culture is the manifestation of this 
mental process of sense generation and its results. Now but let's go back to the specifics of historical sense generation. Historical sense generation starts with something very elementary. A certain experience of temporal change which challenges the human mind to understand what's going on. So the best expression of this um, starting point for historical sense generation is a statement of a guy uh, who I think all of us know, his name is Hamlet. And Hamlet, you know, lives a normal life and suddenly this normality was deeply challenged by the information that his uncle murdered his father. And then his comment is, the world is out of joint. And then, oh cursed spite, that I was born to set it right. And this is the secret of the beginning of sense generation by an experience which challenges and makes it necessary to get a new orientation. But away from literature, back to the hard facts of history, another example is the German unification, which started at the 9th of November 1989, when the Berlin Wall came down. Overnight, the Germans found themselves back as being a nation. Before that, it was not so clear. Some historians said there is a West German nationality and an East German nationality, but the traditional German nation is over. And now it is there. And that is a need for orientation. Who are we now? And that is a need for orientation. And the clever people, of course, immediately know we need now an historical interpretation. So one of our best foundations, the Volkswagen Stiftung, gave to my Bielefeld colleague, Hans Ulrich Wehler, most famous German historians uh, of um, our age, I think about 10 or 20 scholarships for uh, dissertations on the issue of nation in German history. These needs for orientation cover the whole field of historical consciousness and historical culture in human life. Asking for the specifics, the distinctive nature of historical studies, needs for orientation have to be thematized as interests in cognition. The scientific character of historical sense generation is based of um, formation of the needs for orientation to interests in cognition. Now, the next point is concepts of historical understanding. To make clear what the issue is about, let me again quote Shakespeare. In um, Richard II, the king has lost a battle and he is afraid of losing his kingdom. That causes needs for orientation. And he says, oh, if one could read the book of fate, how chances mock and changes fill the cup of alteration. The happiest youth viewing this progress through would sit him down and shut the book and die. And then the answer comes from his chancellor. There is a history in all men's lives. And that is the starting. Now we know what we have to do. And this is concepts of understanding, of historical understanding. Well, here is a place where philosophy of history, either in, a, in, a, in an academic way or even in the everyday way of life, takes place. So I give you an example 
of how to conceptualize. This is a concept of evolution. There are others. In uh, historical studies as a science, here is a place for historical theories or the work of building or if you like constructing ideal types which disclose the experience of the past concerning a temporal change which we have to uh, work through in order to understand the temporal change which has caused our orientation needs. These concepts are in a way empty and they have now to be filled with evidence, with a worked through historical experience. And here's a place where the historians go into the archive or where people like Herodot or Thucydides or people who were not professors uh, in historical science went around and asked some people uh, like Herodot in Egypt, you, you was, a, you, you was a, a witness for this and that, tell me what happened. And this is um, another principle now, bringing evidence into the concepts of historical understanding. And here is a climax of history as a science. All history is eager to legitimate the statements about the past by pointing at evidence. And um, that can be a very uh, different way, but we in historical studies as a science, we have a very specific way to bring evidence into the concepts of historical understanding. We call that research. And research is a process of cognition governed by rules. And we call these rules method. That's very important. I mean, uh, sometimes historians want to know more about that and they say, well, what we have to bring about is an understanding of the past in order to understand the present and so on. And so they say, the philosophers can tell us what understanding is. And then they take out of the library and even buy that famous book by Hans Georg Gadamer, which says, Truth and Method. A wonderful title. Exactly that is uh, what this rules for treating the sources is about. It is an understanding with truth claims and the guarantee for the truth claims is method. Unfortunately, the title of that book is absolutely misleading because in the book, Karama says there is truth against method. And that is misleading. Then. If we follow Gadamer in that respect, we never understand what it means to be a professional historian and what the, the rules for historical research are about. I have put this um, part of historical sense generation, the rules for treating the sources at the top of my scheme, because here is the top, the most essential element in historical sense generation for doing it in the form of a science. I'm not so sure whether today historical studies teaches or is, uh, the students in historical studies really learn what method is. I don't know any book in the 20th century, not to speak about our century, where on the highest point of the progress of uh, developing methods of research, historical method is presented. The classical books 
where you can learn what method is about were written in the 19th century. And that is a pity. I mean, do you know what the first methodical step in the research process is? But normally, the professors tell the students in the beginning of the research process are the sources. So start with the sources. That is wrong. In the beginning of the research project is a question. A question. And then at the end is an answer. I will stop here, but just say, we have an established tradition of methodology in our profession, in our science, but today it seems to me that we have forgotten it. And here is the guarantee for the solidity of the knowledge produced by the professional historians with their competence for historical research. Here is the proof for our truth claims that what we present as interpreted information about the past is superior to all other forms of knowledge about the past. Here we are the Pelés of historical sense generation. 